Ladies and gentlemen, today is all about um, selling and I'm going to explore four crucial things that to say during a sales call or a consultation that I wish I knew when I started. Uh, if you follow what I'm going to share in this training, you will see your conversions during consultation skyrocket beyond your wildest dreams. Uh, hope I got you excited enough uh, here at the beginning. Thank you for watching live. If you're watching live, if you're watching the replay, make sure you put hashtag replay. If you're listening to the podcast, thank you very, very much for listening on the show. Thank you for being uh, here. Now, uh, during this episode, I want to talk about four things. And uh, all this month, we are talking about selling um, because we are also launching our Sales Mastery uh, Intensive Program. And uh, one of the things that I've realized, uh, in particular, when talking about selling, is that the way you run a sales consultation, uh, it is, needs to have a structure. It needs to have a formula. Now, I'm not saying a script. There's a big difference. A formula or a structure is something that keeps you on track. A script is something that makes you a robot. And no one wants to buy to, from, from robots yet <laughs> but <laughs> no one people want to buy because they will connect with you and therefore they will buy from you in fact that's why at uh, during this um, this part of the consultation if you say certain things you will trigger a better or a worse response from the person in front of you there are some things that uh, is better to avoid and things is better to say and i want to focus on four things that i found that not many people actually use um, that not many people uh, actually they, um, uh, they they use during their consultations and they don't do them they don't do it because they don't know and uh, I wasn't doing them at the beginning guess why because uh, I didn't uh, know myself and therefore I left a lot of money on the table or I was still wondering why some of these consultations weren't going through or why people were not engaging or why people were always saying I need to think about it and it was so frustrating because uh, I knew it was the right thing for them I knew it was uh, what they were looking for. I knew I could help them. And just because I didn't do the best I could during that uh, sales conversation, then unfortunately that didn't, um, I didn't get the results that, that I wanted. So that's why I want to, to stress how important how important it is to say the right things at the right time. And these are four things that I wish I knew at the beginning and guys thank you very much for joining uh, make sure you give me a whoop whoop in the comment if you're watching live hi Rima thank you for joining here so first of all is uh, um, we divide uh, is important for you to be familiar with the way we teach to run consultation uh, we created the Wilo model the Wilo model is formed in four components. Number one is the W, the welcome. Number two is the I, investigate. Number three is the lead. Uh, and uh, number four, the O, is the options. And so I'm going to give you uh, some questions to ask, uh, add, uh, things to say at these different points. The welcome is where you are um, creating the first positive experience with the client. And uh, when you are setting the scene, uh, hi Sima, thank you very much for joining. And there is one thing which is really, really, really important to put in the setup, which is your boundaries. Now, it's really important to make sure that you have very clear boundaries from the beginning of the consultation. The reason why it's important, it is because if you don't have them, then the, the person in front of you can take ownership of the conversation. Why well, you want to be in control because you want to show them they can trust you, that you're able to give them the results that they want. And that's why this is one of the best things that you can do. And in fact, during the, the W, the, the, the welcome part, in the setup, there is three things that I always say. And I want to get them on board so we are on the right on the same page during the consultation. Number one is honesty. I would say now before we start, I want to make sure that we are on the same page. I want you, I'm gonna go be completely a hundred percent honest with you, and I want you to be a hundred percent honest with me. Because if we don't do this from the beginning, then it means that uh, we are already not starting with the right foot. If you're honest, I'm honest, we can uh, 
grow together and we can see then what's the next step going to be. Are you okay with that? Boom. That's number one. The second one is the time. I want to make sure that they understand that there is a limited time because, and they can allocate the time for, for that consultation. I would say this consultation is for 45 minutes. So can you uh, allocate these 45 minutes without being interrupted or without any distraction? Yes, fantastic. So now I know, I know I'm not going to have any other surprise. Uh, sometimes you can have surprises where people that you were expecting, they are there for the consultation and they show up and just as you go into the pitch of the programs, then they have to leave or something happens and you don't know it. That doesn't work. And so I want to make sure that the timing is right. And then the last one is the outcome. I want to make sure that we are aligned on the same outcome and what I would say would be uh, at the end of this of this consultation we are going to make a decision we're going to make a decision if we are a good fit to move forward together or not are you okay now the reason why I'm saying this is because I want them from the beginning to be in the mindset that at the end of the call they're gonna make a decision it's gonna be working together or not working together this will limit the number of people that will say I need to think about it is not going to eliminate the problem, but it will limit because from the get-go, they are now in their mindset, they are in decision mode. And that's where I want them to be. And so I have the agreement, I ask permission, so I have the agreement to go into that way. And because I have now that agreement, then um, it's gonna be more likely that they are, we're going to move ahead because we are at the same page. So that's the first thing, the, one of the first sequences to say is to establish your authority at the beginning in the while part. Hey, Aaron, great to see you. Thank you very much for joining. Looking forward to joining your Facebook Live in about half an hour. And then the second thing is in the I. Now, the while model, the I is in the investigate. And there is one question you always want to know before you go at the end and before you go and uh, to explain the product or services that you have while you're just uh, fact finding and finding information about them. And the question is, uh, is there something that could be, if, uh, if I give you, if we see that we could be a good fit to work together and uh, my offer is exactly what you're looking for, is there anything that could stop you from uh, saying yes tonight? Now, why do I want to know it from almost the beginning of the conversation? Not the very beginning, but during the fact-finding and investigation. Because I don't want to have surprises at the end. I don't want to have someone saying at the end, oh, well, you know, but I don't have enough money. I wish I knew before, so then I can adjust then the pitch and the consultation and the programs I'm going to offer to make sure that I'm answering this question because I already know that's an elephant in the room. So if I know it in advance, I can address it. But if I'm not able to know it, how can I address that elephant in the room? I can't. It's impossible. And that's why it's crucial that in the investigation part of the call, I ask that question. If there is something stopping you from uh, moving ahead together today, what would that be? And if they say, no, there is nothing, that's awesome, fantastic, brilliant means that we are on the same page. But it actually, if they say, oh, you know what, but I don't think, uh, I'm really struck with time at the moment, then I know that I need to pitch a product or create an experience for them that is going to address immediately the time concern. Is it making sense? If you're, if you're listening right now, if you're watching live, tell me, is it making sense? Give me a whoop whoop. Here in the comment, or if you have any question, let me know. If you are listening to the podcast, then just shout whoop whoop wherever you are in the car or <laughs> while working out. I don't know. And then the third thing I wish I knew. So we talk about two things already. The third thing I wish I knew uh, when I started selling to say on the consultation is uh, during the option phase. So the O stands for option of the Wilo model. And in the option is uh, actually never not to pitch one single product or one single service, but to give it three options, two or three options. I found three converts more than two. Reason why? Because uh, with three people think that, uh, that they feel they have more choice and they are in control of that choice. But the way you present those options, they are as important as the options that you present. What, what do I mean about that? If I'm selling a program and uh, I have three levels of this program, 
then a lot of people would start from the smallest package going up to the bigger one. It will make sense. You start from the smallest one and you grow up to the bigger one. Wrong. No, don't do that. Start from the top one. Start from the most expensive one. Why is that? Well, first of all, it will make your sales job much easier because most of the time your middle tire program or your, or your smaller program, they will be smaller parts of the bigger one. So if you explain it already on the bigger program, then when you are mentioning the medium program or the medium offer or the low end offer, you're actually taking parts that you have already said, so you don't need to explain yourself and it will make it easier and faster. Secondly, remember the first number that you pitch is the number that will be in the head of the person in front of you and it will be the number that sets the bar. Now, if you say as a first number 10,000 and then as a low end offer, then it will be 3,000. Now, 3,000 is, is quite a good amount of money but it will sound way cheaper because uh, first of all, you said the 10,000. So in comparison from the 10,000, the 3,000 is cheaper. But if you start from 3,000, or let's say you start from 200 on the low end offer, and actually the higher end is 10,000. Now, because you said 200 first, now 10,000, it sounds even more expensive because the first number you said was 200 and the gap is too big. So instead of sounding the 200 sounding like a good deal, now they're focusing on the 10,000 being way more expensive than it is. And so that's why it's important. Hello, Vincenzo Linoci in the house. Thank you very much for joining, Lino. So we have, uh, when the reason why this is important is that when you start selling, the first number you say is the number that will set the bar. So set the bar high, so then you have room to go down. That's the, it's, it's easier to go downhill than to climb the mountain, <laughs> okay? So that's the other thing that I wish I knew when I started. And then we have the fourth thing. Uh, then I'm going to do a recap. Uh, and for those of you that just joined right now, thank you for joining. The fourth one is uh, uh, ask for in the option phase. Or what, now we are in the close phase, actually, of the options. Ask for the card details. Ask for the payment details there and then. Now, disclaimer, if you're working with corporates, most of the time you will need to send an invoice, so that will not apply. But if you're working with private, which it means as well, small business owners, that will make the decision. So you're talking with the decision maker. And if he's a small business owner, this is applies. Or with a private, which is not a business owner, but is a private client or a customer, which they don't have a business. Then, really important, really, 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 really important to do is to get their card details. So why is that? Because the moment you close the call is the moment you have no more control over their life, over what happens to them, over what doesn't happen to them, over their thinking, over who they talk to or not talk to. And if you don't have those payment details, what happens? And if you don't process the payments, it's easier for them to chicken out and, you know, sometimes we have all been there. Uh, we were excited in the moment where we were buying something. And I remember I, I did it a few times. Um, I was really excited. And then I had second thoughts after the call. And because that person didn't have my credit card detail, it was easier for me not to respond. Now, that's not something I don't do anymore. But uh, if <laughs> I find that if I don't do it or if our team doesn't do it with our clients, it's easier for them to find the other excuses or change their mind because they, they, there is less of a tie. Well, if I got a credit card details, boom, the moment we finish the call, I submit the payment. Now you're in. And so the momentum builds. And so in that mind, is is more difficult now to stop something which is already in the process than to, uh, to, uh, is, than to not start a process at all. And that's why a lot of time when you're talking about sales, it's all about micro commitments to get for the big commitments that creates the excitement. And even asking for the car detail, that's a micro commitment that I'm trusting you with my money. I'm trusting you with my car details. That's a, one of the biggest forms of trust that we can give because it means that I'm going to trust you, company or person, that you're able to handle my most private information, some of my most private information really well. And that tells a lot about the person and the relationship that you're building with them. The trust is built, the trust is there. Because if they don't trust you, they will not give you the credit card details. So 
other than the fact that you are in control of the payment process, then you're also making sure that, um, uh, that the relationship and the trust is there and is very high. And it's that micro-commitment, where someone have micro-commitment over micro-commitment over micro-commitment, then uh, making the big decision now sounds like a small decision. And that's where you're building the momentum. There's a great book called Influence from Robert Cialdini. Make sure you read that. If you haven't read it or listened to it, do it right now. There are great summaries of that book. And one of the laws of influence is commitments. Uh, someone, we make a small commitment and then we make a bigger one. That we make a bigger one. Suddenly we are in that loop and uh, it will feel like counter nature to go back because now we are too invested in the process and we don't want to let other people down. So there is a lot of, lot of psychological reasons about that. So it's very, 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 very powerful. And this is the last thing I wish I knew to ask for the car details. I would have uh, definitely uh, had uh, way less clients uh, di disappearing uh, from, uh, from, from, uh, from me just because maybe they told to someone else and they told them out to one of their partner that didn't have any clue about what we were doing. And then I said, no, the only thing they see is not the conversations we had, but it's the money leaving their account. And unless they have a supportive partner that actually wants to explore, then, uh, you know, those things can happen. So it's uh, to protect yourself and your business and to make sure that uh, you can deliver the, with the service that you want to deliver to your clients. All right, so let's recap. There are four things that I wish I knew uh, to say during the sales call that I wish I knew when I started. Number one, during the welcome part of the Wilo model is uh, to check into honesty, time, an outcome, making sure they are on the same page. Number two, during the eye of the investigation part of the Wilo model, asking if there is something stopping you from going ahead right now, what would it be given that uh, you like the products and the service that we are going to offer? Because I want to know the objections from the beginning. And then in the option phase, number three, give options in the right order, start from the most expensive to the least expensive. And then number four, ask for the car details when you are closing so you can be in control of the payment process. These are four things I knew. There are way more that I'm sharing in our Sales Mastering Intensive Mentoring Program. We are open the applications right now. The applications are going to be open for only 10 people. It's going to be a three-month program. We have different options with the payment plans as well, depending if you want to have one-to-one -one support or attend a group program. So is uh, affordable for everyone that wants to take seriously the art and science of selling and the aim for the three months is to create your best three months yet you will absolutely love sales mastery mentoring pro intensive mentoring program there is a link here in the show notes and here in the description make sure you check the link and you read the page then you can see all the information and the case studies, the people that went through the program already, and uh, you can see what can happen to you by joining Sales Master Intensive. If you have any other question as well, send me an email at uh, simone at gtex.org.uk or connect with me during in our social media so you can ask more questions about the course and uh, how it works. Because these are just some of the few things that uh, we have in this course. And uh, the, the idea is that if you improve in different areas of your sales process, then it will mean that now suddenly your sales process will become so good and you will become so good at selling and you will fall in love with selling. So then you will definitely have your best quarter yet. And that's how we are going to help you. Well, thank you very much for joining. So make sure you click the link to check out our Sales Mastering Intensive program now it's all for today uh, if you're watching uh, on facebook thank you very much for watching uh, these solo episodes are recorded are not recorded are <laughs> done live uh, here on our facebook on my facebook page simone vincenzi if you want to check them out live so you can join in and ask your questions and as well, if you want to, if you're listening to the podcast, thank you very much for listening on the show. Uh, subscribe if you haven't done it yet, or if you're watching on YouTube, then subscribe to the YouTube channel. Now, it's all for me. Thank you very much. And remember that together we grow exponentially. Ciao.